Hello and welcome back. Today I'm talking about Cord's flagship moving coil phono stage, the Symphonic. It sells for uh, 4,000 USD and about 3,000 pounds in the UK. This Symphonic moving coil phono is out of my uh, good friend Rob's personal system. He's now moving it into one of his store demos. So Rob owns and operates No Noise Records in Hi-Fi in Toledo, Ohio. If you happen to live in the Toledo, Detroit metro area or are visiting nearby and you're looking to buy high quality analog hi-fi gear, uh, be it turntables, uh, amplifiers, phono stages, be it entry, mid or really high-end gear, even speakers, you owe it to yourself to visit No Noise. Rob is a very knowledgeable guy with many, many years of experience and he's a true gentleman. Along with Core, he is also a dealer for Origa, ProAct, Fine Audio, Spendar, etc. If you want to listen to this piece in action or other high-end analog gear in action, go pay him a visit. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this beauty here. I love this design, all industrial looking, all about function, but yet does not forego form. Gorgeous, solid aluminum chassis. These uh, beautiful glass windows allow you to view settings. On your left window, you can see gain settings that you've selected. There is a red LED that comes on next to the setting. On your right window, you can view uh, the impedance settings you've selected. So how do you make the gain and impedance selections? That's the back of the unit. Starting from right to left, first up is your rumble filter switch. Then come the uh, gain settings just above the XLR outs. Um, this is where you push in and push out to select or uh, unselect the gain settings. 58, 68, 74, and 85 dB. Wow. So to the left of these are input Impedance selector, uh, impedance selector switches, 33, 100, 270, 4700, and 47,000 kilo ohms. Super flexible, as you can see. There is also an input impedance uh, selector switch of 150 picofarads. Further left is the balance unbalanced selection switch. If you end up purchasing this unit, please read the manual thoroughly before operating. These changes in settings for gain or impedance, uh, I believe are not meant to be done while listening to music. All right, so how does it sound? Uh, a little bit about the system setup. Uh, I use my Riga P10 with the Koetsu Black moving coil cartridge, which is about 0.3.4 millivolts output uh, into the Chord Symphonic and then into the Rode RP1 preamp. I used a few power amps uh, the Shit Azure Class A uh, amplifier, a Yamaha Class A amplifier, the Jalita 3502S also as a power amp. Uh, speakers, I used my main reference speakers, the 4-pack speakers, but I also used the Kef LS50 Meta and the BMW 606 S2 Anniversary Edition as well. So sonic traits that were immediately apparent. Solidity or the physicality of the sonic illusion of images formed within the sound stage uh, with a sort of a precision actually locked in place uh, within the sound stage, both in the lateral and the depth planes. Presumably from the dead, silent, low, low noise floor, even at the highest gain settings of 84 dB. Uh, things like superb mid-range, extended bass, airy treble, detail retrieval, timing, dynamics. Of course, you expect them all at, when you're paying 4,000 USD at this price, and those are definitely delivered in spades, no doubt about it. Uh, Stocking through albums, first album here is uh, Patricia Barber's Cafe Blue. This is an Impex first step pressing. Uh, song here that I want to talk about is called Nardis. Patricia Barber's vocals in the beginning of this track is stunning, hauntingly real sounding. It feels like you're uh, 
in the studio with her in the studio with her watching her perform and you can hear the ambience of the recording venue too halfway into the track a drum solo starts as expected the dynamics of the snare rim shots are explosive not only are they super punchy and explosive but now they occupy a clearly defined position on the sound stage and the shimmer and decay from the cymbal crashes sound so impactful without any distortion unforced natural clarity and super detailed images of these were also appropriately scaled and clearly defined in the left center and just a bit behind the plane of the speaker and the bass drum kick just pounds you in the chest. Superb recording, superb oral treat. Speaking of oral treats, there is another one coming up. This is the Three Blind Mice recording of uh, Isao Suzuki Quartet album called Blowout. This is uh, fantastic. This is also an MPEX label. Aquamarine is the name of the track. The beginning song starts with uh, vibes coming from a Fender Rhodes 3D sounding with that almost tubey sweetness but very clear, very defined and fully saturated tonal color palette. Then the cello comes in. It sounds deep, sonorous and weighty and again very clearly defined in the right center uh, of the stage. Uh, the size of this image is really tall. The texture of the bow, of how it sounds when being pulled against the string, sounds so natural. And then of course the percussion starts and the percussion seems to be in this Japanese rhythm, a bit taiko like with that, with that intensity but very carefully structured and the intensity here is measured. And the cymbal taps and this percussion work sounded live. They had the right amount of bite to give you the clear illusion of a wooden stick hitting a metal cymbal. Album number three. This is Kenny Burrell's Midnight Blue. This is a recently reissued, reissued uh, on the Blue Note label. The track here is called Soul Lament. This guitar solo via the symphonic sounds absolutely ridiculously close to Kenny Burrell plugging in his guitar into an amp in your listening room and the strumming texture just pours into your listening room. Wow, this is uh, the best I've heard this uh, track sound guys. Um, I've heard other 4K sound stages, uh, namely the West 3 signature phono with the outboard uh, linear power supply. I did not experience uh, this sort of realism. Um, guys, if you like your jazz with a clean sounding blues guitar that doesn't rely on any uh, distortion for impactfulness, this album is an absolute essential. So. In conclusion, obviously you can tell I love this phono, uh, this moving coil phono. So what does it offer versus the Huey? Uh, sonically, it's more effortless in detail retrieval and scales those sonic images with, with real precision. Enhanced timing and dynamics, very true to the original signal uh, from a timing standpoint. And that's the reason that's giving you more of that physicality and realism. Um, the, the timbre, uh, mid-range clarity, good bass and treble were all there in the Huey. This just takes it to that next level with more dynamics and the clearly defined images in, in soundstage. Functionally, well functionally it's a moving coil only. But uh, it's, it's capable of, of supporting your very low output MCs. For those of us that own ultra low output moving coil carts like perhaps the Artifon Anna 
or the Haniva or the Denondial 304 or some of those EMTs that have less than 0.2 millivolts, 0.18 millivolts, this high level of gain stage capability in the pono stage at low at lowest levels of distortion is what is essential for maintaining fidelity in my humble opinion because you want the low level amplification to be done in the phono stage versus you turning your volume part up in your line stage preamp or integrated amplifier um, being that this is their flagship product i had very high expectations um, i almost have talked to myself before listening to this saying hey manage your expectations you may be a bit disappointed despite that despite that after listening to this this beautiful uh, symphonic it surprised and delighted me very highly recommended oh as i mentioned earlier uh rob replaced this in his personal system he replaced it with the riga aura and a couple of weeks ago uh, he invited me to listen to the riga aura in his system and we spent an hour or so doing so. Uh, we had different albums playing, uh, uh, different from what I showed here on his more expensive setup. And wow, let me tell you what. If you think I love the chord symphonics performance, man, I had to pick my jaw off the floor and wipe my drool off a few times when listening to the aura. Maybe someday he'll let me borrow the aura for a bit, maybe, but I won't push my luck. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video guys, I had so much fun making it and guys listening is believing. Go see this beautiful symphonic phone stage in action at Rob's No Noise Hi-Fi in Toledo, Ohio. So that's it, thanks for watching. If you'd like to share your thoughts, do so in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, more Hi-Fi gear videos coming soon. Stay tuned, until next time, see you soon.